everyone! Welcome to another week of Clip Studio Paint Tutorial! I'm trying really hard not to say that this week is very exciting. So this week is just mildly exciting. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about the rulers! Now, I have a love and hate relationship with the rulers. I came from Taiwan and rulers were my math teacher's weapon of choice. Just kidding, my math teacher was lovely, I just really hated math. But rulers can be extremely useful. They can be used to measure the height of your slime. Side and a half inch tall. The height of your raccoon landlord? He's about 3 inches tall. Or the length of your favorite Wacom devices? That is 13.3 inches. And if you're thinking, well, what's that to do with art? It has nothing to do with art. I only did that because I wanted to know how tall the slimes are. <laughs> but we really are talking about rulers today. Just the art types. Look for the triangle icon on your toolbar. Under the ruler tool, you will see that there are a ton of different types of rulers. I'm going to be talking about linear, curve, figure, and ruler together. Special ruler next, symmetrical ruler next, and then perspective ruler, which is going to be the main focus today. Before we start, there is something all rulers have in common, and that is the setting, created, editing layer. The setting is quite straightforward. When you have it checked, it will create the ruler directly on the layer you have selected. The triangle means there is a visible ruler on your layer. If you press shift and click on this ruler icon here, it's going to disable it. And shift click again will bring it back. Or you can click on the icon above and simply check show only when editing target off. The next part in common are the two icons in your command bar. Snap to ruler and snap to special ruler. If you cannot see those two icons, either right click on the command bar and choose command bar settings. Or go to file, command bar settings. Once you're in the setting menu, go into view, scroll down and look for snap to ruler, snap to special ruler, select them and hit add. You'll see that the icons now show up on the command bar. But we don't need to, so we're gonna right click on this one and then get rid of it again. Snap to ruler include linear, curve, figure, and ruler pin. Special ruler include special ruler, perspective, and symmetrical rulers. Keep this in mind as it might be important later on. The concept of the ruler tool is very simple. You create the guides and then you're drawing snaps to it. Masterpiece. But the Clip Studio Paint version is much fancier than that. The linear ruler draws a straight line. You simply drag and drop. Curve ruler draws a curve. A figure ruler draws shapes. You can choose rectangle, eclipse, or a polygon. Expanding the figure part can give you number of corners that you want and also roundness of the corner. We'll set it to 6. If you check adjust angle after fix, it means once you create the shape, you can rotate it and then click the canvas again for it to settle. But if you don't have this checked, once you expand, it's going to stay that way. The ruler pen is a freehand ruler. Oh, now that looks like an octopus. Or maybe not, maybe a kappa. How about a kappa? And now you can draw any line and just focus on the line width. For example, with a straight line, I used to do click, shift, and then click again. But that doesn't give me any line width adjustment. So with the ruler tool, I can draw a straight line with any kind of line width I want. And same thing with the rest of the rulers. And it will always snap to the very first one that you touch. Now I want to draw the kappa's eye, but it keeps on snapping to that ruler which is really annoying. So I'll just go to that shortcut that we had on the command bar before and simply click it off. And now it will no longer snap to any of the rulers. And I'm just here casually showcasing my professional artistic skills. <laughs> I guess it's an octopus. <laughs> Using the operation object tool, you can always move any of your rulers. I would also like to point out the newest addition to Clip Studio Paint's update, the Bezier adjustment. If you're not seeing this option, remember to update your Clip Studio Paint to the newest version. Clip Studio Paint is always free to update and they're very diligent in adding useful features for drawing and painting. The Bezier adjustment is something I really wanted Clip Studio Paint to have and they finally updated it. While it isn't the focus of today's tutorial, 
tutorial. If you'd like to learn more about improving your curve in Clip Studio Paint, check out how to use the Continuous Curve tool as well as how to use the Cubic Bezier tool. They have very elaborate tutorials on their website. Back to my Captopus. Special Ruler is amazing and I wish I had known it sooner when I was painting my Bayonetta. It would have made that magic circle so much easier to paint. The Special Ruler has a ton of different types. The basic concept for the Special Ruler is that you will be able to create multiple lines based on the same ruler. For example, while the Linear Ruler allows you to draw one line, the Parallel Ruler allows you to draw multiple. The Concentric Circle is what I would be using a lot in my paintings. Same concept as the figure ruler before, once you draw a circle, you'll be able to rotate, click it again to settle it. And now you can draw multiple circles based on the same ruler. Also, I like to say that I have no idea where I'm going with this illustration. Before we move on from this, there is one thing I would like to point out. Generally, I would recommend having different rulers on different layers. But if you're working on a complex drawing with a lot of different rulers on the same layer, remember to have Snap to Ruler and Snap to Special Ruler handy. Clip Studio Paint will always snap your stroke to the closest ruler. If I have both the ruler and the special ruler enabled, it will simply try to follow anything that is close. So if I want to draw more around the concentric circle, I have to turn off the snap to ruler. And now it's only going to follow the concentric circle because the concentric circle is part of the special ruler. Okay, you know, if I had known this drawing would get to this point, I should have drawn it on a vector layer. No sweat, I fixed it. You can transfer your rulers to another layer whenever you want by dragging the ruler icon to another layer. Now, if you have been paying close attention, you will notice that the parallel line that we first put down was not in effect. The rulers that are considered special, including special ruler, perspective, and symmetrical, tend to cover the entire canvas. Therefore, only one ruler can be active at a time. If you like to use another special ruler on the same layer, use Operation Object. Make sure you only have ruler selected. Click on the ruler that you want and click on the diamond shape. And now it's switched from green to purple. Purple means active, green means inactive. And now when you draw, it's going to follow the parallel line instead of the concentric circle. Well, I was hoping to create a really cool illustration using the rulers. That plan has gone down the drain. So let's move on. Symmetrical ruler creates symmetry. And the line symmetry attribute can be toggled when your number of lines are even number. This ruler can allow you to create some really nice patterns in a really short amount of time. All of those rulers are quite simple and straightforward to figure out. What truly warrants this tutorial is actually the perspective ruler. Perspective ruler, as the name suggests, is a ruler that helps you draw perspective. Combine the perspective ruler with the vector layer for your inking process can really speed up your background drawing. There are actually multiple ways to create perspective ruler in Clip Studio Paint. And interestingly enough, accessing it from the ruler tool is actually the most complex method. It certainly has its uses, which we will get to later on. But we are going to start with the simplest method. Go under Layer, Ruler, Create Perspective Ruler. For one point perspective, imagine yourself looking down one street. It has one vanishing point. For two point perspective, imagine yourself standing in front of a crosswalk looking down two streets. It has two vanishing points on either side. For three point perspective, imagine yourself to be Spider-Man on the top of a building looking down or just a regular peasant on the bottom of the building looking up. Also, just as a friendly reminder, don't ever use a permanent marker on your walk-on devices. This window can let you easily create a preset. Let's say we want to go for the two-point perspective. Just hit OK. And now every line that you draw is going to snap to the ruler. If you draw this on a vector line, you can easily clean up the edges. The snapping to special ruler shortcut is particularly useful in this case because once you have it checked off, you can freely draw anything and simply turn it back on again to draw in perspective again. What's even cooler is that even your selection can now be in perspective. Same with the Eclipse. But more importantly, I want to talk about how to adjust these perspective rulers. Because chances are you're not happy with where the horizon line is or where your vanishing points are. So going to Operation, Object, 
Click on the ruler and you will see a bunch of symbols. The biggest circle moves the entire ruler. The medium circle moves the location of the bars. If you want a vanishing point to be further away, you simply drag it out. The middle one moves the horizon. The smallest one on the horizon line rotates. The smallest one on the vanishing point bar moves the vanishing point when it's out of sight. So you don't have to constantly like zoom out and then find your vanishing point. Oh, it's right there to adjust it. You simply have to move these ones. The initial direction of your line decides which ruler it's going to snap to. But sometimes if you don't want the other vanishing point to be interfering, click on the little diamond shape right here. And you will see that the line has turned green. Green is disabled. Purple is enabled. Now even if you try to draw towards the green vanishing point to the right, it's not going to do that as it's only snapping to the purple line on the left. Honestly, they really could use better icons to represent these. The same thing applies to one point and three point perspective. Although for three point perspective, you would have to zoom out if you want to adjust the vertical line. Look for it here. Also, when you have a perspective ruler selected, you can look under grid in the tool property panel. You can enable the grid for easier view. But if you find it hard to wrap around the idea of dragging those dots, here's the third method. Right click on your layer menu, go into new layer and select 3D layer. This is the same 3D plane you saw from last week's video. You can adjust the angle by using the object tool to drag it around or expand on the camera option and change the perspective. You won't be able to draw directly on the 3D layer, so hit Shift and click on this ruler icon on the 3D layer. Start a raster or vector layer on top of it, and now you have some perspective rulers to follow. The best thing about this method is that you can always go back into the object tool on your 3D layer and readjust the camera position for a slightly different angle. So in my opinion, the presets and the 3D planes are the two simpler way to use the perspective ruler. And I'm just going to pretend that you asked about the original perspective ruler in the ruler tool. The perspective ruler within the subtool panel is very useful when it comes to recreating perspective from a reference. This is my beautiful, totally not questionable basement in Animal Crossing. Using this as a reference, you'll want to select perspective ruler. Let's actually not create an editing layer and simply draw a guide following the object in your reference. Remember to always draw two guides to create a vanishing point. You would know that you did it correctly when the lines turn purple. Now do it for the other side side. And now when you zoom out, you can see that it automatically created a horizon line for you. And now you can add in more object that will follow the same perspective very easily. And with this, you can easily create guidelines from your reference photos. If it's a more complex reference, you can always create more guides for it. You will also always need two guidelines to create one vanishing point. So try to find two lines that will follow the same vanishing point. Same with the vertical vanishing point. And now you can study perspective using photograph with the help from the guides. And that is the use for the rulers. I also admit I'm not an expert on background art. So I'd like to give a special shout out to Clip Studio Tips on Twitter, as well as Datotronic. Clip Studio Tips is filled with really in-depth knowledge on Clip Studio Paint. I actually learned the 3D plane from him. And Datotronic, who is an incredible artist, is the person that's behind it. And it often blows my mind how powerful Clip Studio Paint can be. While I feel like I know quite a bit, I'm still constantly learning new things from the community. So please check him out as he has so many assets that I never would have imagined to make. And that is it for today's tutorial. Next week, we're going to talk about the function that Clip Studio Paint was originally designed for. Guess what it is? Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I am the one with Bear. I will see you next week. 12 inches.